So you want to build one of these? I'll show you how. If you stick around at the end, I'll give you the plans and the cost. All next on Home Pro Hero. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm building a mobile workbench today. Can't wait for this. It's the first step to cleaning and organizing my garage, which is one of my goals this summer. We're gonna stay on budget and do it cheap because it's DIY. I bought 15 two by fours. I probably won't need that many, but Menards had a crappy selection of them. So I bought extra just in case. I needed a couple two by sixes too. I also needed to buy four caster wheels so I can lock it in place. So I went with two and a half inch construction screws. And of course, my good friend, liquid nails to make sure the table's nice and sturdy with no movement. Oh, and also some OSB, half inch for the bottom part of the table, three quarter inch for the top part. So I created the plans on SketchUp like I normally do for projects. It outlines all my dimensions of scale, so it's really easy to do all the calculations before you even get started on the plan. Shouldn't take long, it's a fairly easy project. Let's get started. So we got two two by sixes cut at five six each. I went with two by six just to give me some girth at the bottom. The rest of the construction will all be two by four. I need six 36 inch two by fours for the uprights. Nah, I might be wasting a little bit of lumber because I'm going with odd numbers like five six and three foot. That's fine. The slivers and pieces I'll use for support on the workbench. So you see why I might need a workbench? This sucks. Last time I'm gonna be working off the ground on any major projects going forward. So I had liquid nails left for my last project. We'll just use it. And then I'll use a speed score to make sure it's nice and straight on the two by six, which it is now. So the two uprights will be on each end flush with the end of the two by six, right? And then I'll put another one in the middle on both sides. Okay, so the plans call for another upright at two foot and a half inches to cut out a spacer to give me the exact same distance on both sides. Both sides are done for the most part. Now we're gonna cut those middle pieces and give us the width of the table. It's gonna be three one, so three foot, one inch. Let me cut four real quick and I'll show you where I install them at. We're using liquid nails in the corners, a couple screws, maybe both ways. I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but it should be too tough. We'll cut a long board for the top at five six, and then over there, I think it's two five and a half. We'll just make sure this ends nice and flush down here, and then we'll work on the other end, make sure it's nice and flush. We'll eventually square all this up, but right now we're not really too concerned with that. Got one screw in there. Let's get on the other end real quick. Nice and plumb down there. Okay, so I got one of these three one boards, three foot one inch, the same ones are at the bottom. I wanna go here with it, right? Cause I wanna catch this over here. And then the other side, the other board right here will be cut off right here, but I'll cover the ends. That way it looks good. real quick uh, before I do that though if you like this type of content and you like to improve the value of your home and property then subscribe to the channel Yeah, flip the pipe down. Uh, ideally, I was gonna put this here like this. Um, I don't have the big enough screws, really. I got these uh, roofing screws I use for the Pavilion Smokehouse. I might try them, they're awful undersized. Ah, I think I 
think that'll hold. Put the other ones on. That's that's pretty firm. I don't see it pulling out. I think we're all right. Let's go ahead and install the uh, shelf for the table saw real quick. Uh, my table saw is like 12 and maybe a quarter or something like that. Every saw will be different. So don't go off these measurements for your saw, table saw, because yours could be different unless it's that exact same model. This model is in my description if you're interested. Great saw, it's all better. I took the width of this and then I have a half inch piece of uh, OSB I'm putting on top of this shelf here and then three quarter inch up here. Let me show you how the uh, miter saw drop drawer is going to work. Slides in here like this, hook up like that, and then I'll have hinges behind here that will actually allow this to drop down like this. And the saw will drop down, and then I'll have a piece of wood I can plug in here to give me a countertop or I guess a worktop, workbench type area uh, when I'm not using the chop saw. I had to run the loads to get the MDF top for this which also includes a small little top here and also a fill-in piece here. So I got the top, had Lowe's cut it up for me. Great service, I know they're not perfect, but for this project, good enough. I'm gonna use these to put on the front here, both sides, and then I'll use these traditional hinges in the back to give it a hinging effect. So my idea is to mount the saw on here permanently, or at least so it's secure, and then drop the front of the saw down and put the filler piece in when I need the work top. Okay, let's see if it opens. Boom. You gotta be careful when I drop the saw because the saw is gonna weigh a lot more. Oops. Sturdy platform, next step. I'm gonna basically uh, overhang one inch on all sides. So all I'm gonna do is measure the zip code of where this is at. This flange right here has to be able to move. So I'm probably looking at about 45 inches. That gives me plenty of clearance for the guard to actually move back and forth. Over here, I have to go to the side of the table saw plus an overhang. Uh, so that's five and a half to here, plus six, another uh, half inch. So you're probably looking I'll probably just go six inches. I did have to add a block down here to support the front of this. I could have easily ran the uh, OSB forward, but then I had to cut around some stuff. So I was like, yeah, it's just easier to put a two by four block there. I want my table saw right on the edge right there. That way this clears here, it will clear the front here. Every table saw, every miter saw will be different here. You'll have to customize this if you build it at home. like working with MDF. I just don't like the dust it makes. It makes a big mess, but it cuts really nice. It's pretty easy. Eh, I got some fine tuning to do, but nothing major. So the piece we cut out of here should fit down here. I did take an inch off to kind of let it sit in. I didn't want an overhang in front of my saw. So I basically used the table saw, cut that back edge off that was the ugliest. Pour it in there and there she is. Now I'm gonna drive these. I got these big long, I don't know what these are, but they're gonna be definitely plenty. Hopefully not too much. Oh yeah, that works. <laughs> Whew. That's a lot of screw. Rolls pretty good. I'll probably run a sander over this before I'm done. 
especially the edges because they're kind of sharp. I got one last thing to do, which is going to be this little wing wall and then the tabletop on that side of the table saw. So just like that, I've already built it pretty simple, right? This goes here like this. And this will go on here like this. This should, I like this lining up here nice and tight. We won't make it real snug, but I'll make it so I can take the screws out and readjust it if I ever get a different table saw, which I don't ever see me ever doing. Okay, all I'm doing is lining it up with the level on this front edge right here, making sure this edge is nice and tight on the level, and then I'm making sure my guide actually slides by easily, evenly on both sides. Hope it fits. Ah, plenty of room. Could have been much tighter. Oh well. Here we go. There's 24 inches. Oh, sorry guys. Just working on my next project. Let me show you how the workbench turned out. It's roughly a six foot by four foot tabletop on caster wheels. Got lots of storage all over the place. This will permanently house my miter saw and also my table saw. So I plan on adding some dust collection in the near future. Not only are both tools functional, but I can drop the table saw down, put a piece of plywood on top, and now I have a nice six by four tabletop to work on. By no means am I organized, but I'm getting there. This is the first step to cleaning out this nasty garage and getting on track so I can find my tools every time I need them. So what did this cost me? Just under $200, which is not a bad price considering the plywood, the MDF, and the caster wheels were the majority of that price. The two by fours are cheap. It's a start. I'll bring you all my updates on YouTube, and hopefully my next project, I'll find out this is going to work for me.